we're here again in my kitchen welcome to my kitchen um, today we're cooking an engine <laughs> um, and we're gonna be talking about the the this is a four cycle engine so we're gonna be talking about those four cycles and there's even a fifth cycle um, that I'm gonna talk about so uh, this, it's a five stage engine actually this is um, and we're gonna talk about how we get to that fifth stage um, so we'll jump right into it now I wish I had a chair I could sit in to tell you the truth because I feel like I'm way off video. All right. <clears throat> so the normal uh, four stages of the engine are intake, compression, uh, power, and exhaust. Um, and what I want to go into in this video is how to optimize every single one of those. Um, so, and what I really want to talk about is a five-stage engine. Um, that fifth stage, or what would, would actually be the first stage, um, is going to be an exhaust-driven supercharge of the intake. Um, so now that all comes into play um, with exhaust and intake timing. Um, so that's like with your cam. Um, now this is a very interesting subject. Now... What I want to talk about about this is, I really wish I had a chair. Alright, so the five stage engine now, it would be before even the intake stroke. We're going to have the exhaust rushing out of the engine. As that exhaust is rushing out of the engine, it's going to, as that intake valve opens, it's going to be drawing in the air in from the carburetor into the cylinder at a better rate so in an engine you're basically limited by a few things the amount of air you can get in um, the amount of compression you have how much heat you're actually losing heat is energy and how much um, your exhaust is optimized for your intake and the entire system as a whole it's a big circle now um, when it comes to uh, we'll get into the whole exhaust driven intake charge in a second so we'll start right here at the intake and the number one thing is to optimize every single one of those four or five stages now stage one in your typical four cycle engine is intake all right now the first thing this engine sees is the carburetor now when it sees the car now how air sees this carburetor might not be how you see it. you see it as air going in the way this, I don't know if I'm getting this on camera, so let me hold the camera instead of tripoding it right now. Okay, so the first stage is this, the intake coming into here. Now, on my engine, I've used a velocity stack. Now, a velocity stack is awesome. Um, a velocity stack is awesome because it helps uh, do a couple of things. One... And maybe the most important is it gets the air straightened out before it gets into the venturi of the carburetor. Um, and secondly, it also helps to, it's a velocity stack, so it helps to create velocity in the intake charge by compressing air down and getting it into the engine. So, with those four stages to optimize intake, um, there's a few things that you need to optimize about the intake. Well, you know, the air density, the air charge temperature, your air to fuel ratio, um, the flow restrictions through the intake head and intake valve and seat. These are all things that you need to optimize. So let's just talk about uh, the flow. Now, Typically, this is mounted on either a bike or a cart, and the air is coming this way, right? So as the air passes your carburetor, you, you know, you're seeing the air going in this way, but the air, when the bike is moving, is actually, or the cart is moving, is coming past your carburetor. You need to get this air in there. In the same way that fuel flows out of the carburetor is by air passing over the top of the jet. If you took a straw, put it inside of a bottle, and blew over the top of the straw, 
water will get sucked up through the straw and that's the same way that jet works as air gets passed over the jet it creates a vacuum sucks up the air through the jet and brings it into the engine okay so we understand that concept of course what are you even talking about here so now picture this air going past this right it's now creating a vacuum in there so to optimize this you could put a, a cup here to get the air to come in and make that bend that's just like porting you know this is now a sharp edge okay and so what you're gonna have here if you watch simulations is you're gonna have a low pressure zone right in here and this over here is going to be a high pressure area because it's going to come like this and catch this side and then force it into the carb. Now having a, a velocity or any type of um, runner going into your carburetor is going to greatly help because imagine this being, imagine this plane right here being the actual Venturi and having that effect going on right there. At least this has a chance to get it you know even if this is going to be the high side and this is going to be that low pocket of air because the air is going to create you know it's going to come around here in suction so this area right here is going to be a low pocket of air so this is where all your air is going to be going down so at least when you have this it kind of gets that sorted out before getting to the venturi but another thing that you can also do is basically like ram air now this will do a few different things it'll also create the air to get in line Say if you put an elbow here, where now the, the, the intake was over here, so the air would go in and be forced to curve, that would be a lot better. And also that would create a much higher velocity as like a ram air effect. Um, these are all things to think about. So increasing the flow through the carburetor, getting it into the Venturi straight is big. Um, because you know you have on your port you have the 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 long turn and the short turn radius and depending on how all the air is coming into here it might already be all multiply aligned on one side of that port and no matter how good your flow around that valve is if you've had it mapped on a flow test you know you could skew that just by the air coming in now through the whole system already preloaded in a bad position so getting the air straightened out before it gets into your carburetor, way to go. Intake charge. Cold air is dense. Dense air is more air. Okay? So density is mass. Now mass, you know, if you have, you know, a ton of air, which, you know, isn't really actually that much air. You move probably a ton of air in a few minutes through this engine. A physically weight ton of air. <laughs> Feels light to me. But you're actually putting a ton of air through here. So you put a ton of air through this engine. Now, if you can take that same volume of air and physically squish the air down. So now you've put a ton and a half of air through here you're going to be able to increase the power output of the engine. By increasing the power output of the engine, you know, that's the name of the game. The more air you can get in, the more power potential you have. On a cold day, you need to run more jet. You know, it's just going to have more air. So you need to put more jet. Um, so, that being said, so to get your air colder, you can line the intake cylinder, the whole intake port, all the way from, you wouldn't even need to go this far, but say from your carburetor to the back of the valve face, you can line that with ceramic coating. Ceramic coating does these amazing things. Um, it does, it's like an absolute heat barrier of sorts. You know, you would think just this thin coating of ceramic would actually do nothing. But if you could, they, that's why they coat piston tops with them to prevent the heat from going down. Preventing heat losses um, is huge in an engine. Um, just making to manage your heat temperatures and in a heat is power. You know, it, it's it's the, it's a coefficient of energy. You know, uh, temperature is just measured by the way particles are accelerated within within themselves by the vibration, the the, the acceleration of particles. You know, so heat is energy. 
So being able to, to keep, you know, out of, out of 100% of the fuel you put in, 20% of it go towards actually propelling you down the road. The other 80% is dissipated through heat and parasitic losses. It's a crazy number, right? So you got the intake going in. Um, so things you want to optimize is the flow of the air through your carburetor. Think about how it's getting in. You know, using a velocity stack, a nice big carburetor. Think about how the port is shaped and the, and the flow around the valve. I've talked about that in other videos. Um, so your intake temperature, um, just a little thing is, you know, it's off subject, but methanol goes in a lot colder than gas. Um, it runs the engine uh, colder, more power potential. Uh, that's not the exact reason it makes more power. It just has more BTUs per volumetric, uh, per volume of fuel. Um, and you, and it's just the, the air to fuel ratio is much more dense, so it needs more fuel to get to the same. So it just can burn more BTUs in the same amount of time. So that's your intake event. Next you have is your compression event. Uh, things to get in your compression event. Um, blah, blah, blah. I got this huge list over here. Stage one, supercharge the air. Um... So we have this written down. Stage one is an exhaust driven intake charge. Um, supercharging the air, low lift flow. Okay, so let's not talk about this. So then we have stage two I've written down, but that's actually stage one, which is um, the intake stroke. It's just a piston driven event that draws the air into the cylinder. Um, and it's just drawn in by the actual piston. Now, this is something that's, th the real thing about this is that fifth stage. Um, that's why I wanted to make this whole video. It's just extremely interesting to me. So I, let's kind of talk a little bit about that because we're getting that. We're actually missing the compression stroke. So this is just so you have the intake and then you have compression. On the compression stroke, a couple things that help you optimize it. I've talked about that. I did put these PCV valves in yesterday. I told you guys I was probably getting them in today. So I put them in. I put that 90 in. They're probably going to be running back this way. So that way any of the oil is going down. I'm probably going to tie strap them up here and then they're going to run down. I don't know if they're going to run into, I'll probably end up making just some kind of custom aluminum catch can or getting one and just kind of bolting it on here somewhere. I don't know, maybe to here and then just having these come in. So yeah, but that's going to be that. Oh, I talked about yesterday and running these back down into here. Uh, I was actually looking at my cart. Make sure in between the tube, if you're going to run these, so the oil will drain because this is creating the vacuum. So up here is a vacuum and down here is just air coming out. Uh, so air and oil will be coming out. If you run this directly into this oil cap like that, um, you're, this is going to suck the vacuum through. So you're not going to be able to seal that way. This has to go into a catch can first. And then from the catch can, you can have a tube going into this. But the tube has to have a ball valve on the bottom of it. Um, when you have the ball valve on the bottom of it, you close it off. When the catch can gets full and you shut the engine off, you can then open the ball valve and allow the, the oil to drain back down into the engine. You don't want to have two openings in the block, you know, one sucking and one letting things in. That's just defeating the purpose. So anyhow, so with compression, you know, the PCV system helps because it helps make a good seal in your rings. So there's two things you want to have on the compression stroke. Good valve seal, good seats, um, and good um, valve seat between the valve and the seat for a nice seal for good compression and a nice seal between the cylinder and the rings. Um, the compression stroke is pretty straightforward. You want it, and those are the things to seal it up. Ways you can optimize the compression is by raising your compression. Um, people out there say, compression is the holy grail. That is so stupid. What the hell is compression is the holy grail? I mean, I hear this and I just laugh. Flow is the holy grail. I don't care. You don't even need a, a nitro funny car. The top fuel dragster, the fastest car in the world is like six to one compression ratio. How is compression the holy grail? Flow is the holy grail. There is no correlation between compression and horsepower. None. The only correlation is CFM to horsepower. I mean, a, horsepower is an equivalent of torque, so 
you know, raising your and optimizing. Now, optimizing is different. Optimizing your compression ratio, it is not the holy grail, but optimizing is necessary. And there's reasons why optimizing it is necessary. Optimizing your compression ratio is going to help in two things. One, when the end, when the pit, so the piston comes up, compresses that charge. When that charge then gets ignited, it comes down on the on the ex, on the power stroke. When it's coming down on the power stroke, depending on your compression ratio, if you have a high compression ratio, say ten to one, by the time it drops even to here, the pressure in that cylinder has dropped dramatically. If you have say uh, a one to ten, like the complete opposite. You know, by the time it gets up here, it's going to take the entire length of that cylinder to come down before it gets rid of all that pressure. So by the time the exhaust valve opens, a 10 to 1 compression ratio is going to have a lot less pressure to get rid of than a 1 to 10. You know, so so say a 14 or a 13, let's talk normal, you guys, 12 to 1 for you guys. So a 12 to 1 is going to be optimized for the normal guy. I, I you know, probably would run close to the 13 to 14. You know, it was set up to 16. I took it down, you know, a little bit because I didn't want to deal with parasitic losses from too much um, compression. You know, especially on high RPMs, you lose a lot because it's having to squeeze so hard. But it's great for torque. But, you know, for this, which is going to turn 11,000 RPM, I need to have this engine being able to spin. So I do need the compression for power. Um, and, and, it, and it also, that compression... If it's timed properly with your exhaust, so a high compression engine, it expels most of its power within the first 10 to 15 percent of its movement down. Right? That's crazy. So by the time it's 25 percent of the way down the cylinder, it's most of its power is gone. So that being said, you can open the exhaust um, intake, the exhaust valve, a lot sooner. Now, opening the exhaust valve a lot sooner or just timing that properly, being able to time that exhaust event properly is going to cr create the exhaust to go out correctly. Now, what they talk about intake and exhaust timing is if you can get that exhaust to go out at the perfect time and it's traveling down this tube and it's creating a pressure wave. Now, the absolute best thing I've ever seen was this guy from MIT. He had a 250cc engine. He was making like... I don't know, 70 horsepower with it. He had this like exhaust that was like 10 feet long or something. And the entire thing from here to the end constantly got bigger. It was like a trumpet. Now the whole point of that and the whole point of the trumpet was because as that pressure wave is going up, it's expanding. As the pressure wave is expanding, a pressure wave is a physical, measurable, um, you know, uh, Blah, blah 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 it has physical characteristics so behind that pressure wave is a low pressure wave so the bigger this pressure wave gets as it's traveling down this tube it's creating a lower and lower and lower so it's creating more and more suction behind it so in this whole situation here we have this event happening you know this four cycles so if you can time this low pressure behind these exhaust events to actually, so, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. There's a lot of information here. I'm not great on making these videos. So you have the intake charge coming in. This is coming in at bar, which is like, I don't know, 14.7 PSI maybe? You guys probably know more than I do. But that's probably coming in here at 14.7 PSI. By the time it's around the valve... And by the time this engine's using it at high RPM, you're probably likely to only get 2 PSI out of that 14 PSI to actually enter into there. Right? That's nuts. So, by using this exhaust timing, this fifth stage, which is the exhaust timed intake supercharging event, by the timing that correctly, you can create up to 2 bar of negative pressure. 30 PSI negative that's like having 30 pounds of boost technically coming into there so it's a supercharged intake event now this charge happens fast and it's not steady but what that event does is during the low lift flow so the valve can only flow so much 
CFM depending upon its skirt area and stuff like that and the seats and the way the air is traveling around the valve but optimized valve you know a, a good race valve flows 60 percent of its 100 percent capability of flow so by actually timing this event properly you can get the valve to flow over a hundred percent of its flow capability over a hundred percent by timing that properly and we all know low lift flow is everything so getting that timing event proper is everything so you know we talked about the blah 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 follow a two bar by focusing on exhaust and intake tuning talked about getting the air in there cold the intake temperature compression is just the pcv valve and seals power stroke so the power stroke all right i have written down here make sure your crank's balanced you know a lightweight rotational mass and get rid of friction that's how you optimize the power stroke everything in here has to be balanced Anything off of balance, it's not going to kill you. You can run, you can take the balance shaft out and just run the engine on a stock crank. It's going to shake like those little son of a bitch that low RPMs from like 16 to 2 grand. We all know that. But it's going to run and it'll run for a while. But it's not going to run forever. It, that, those little vibrations of the piston rocking around and the crank moving around, that's going to wear the bearings. It's going to wear the rings. It's going to wear the cylinder. It's going to wear the piston skirts. It's going to wear things out. Balancing everything in there and making sure your, your clearances and tolerances are all perfect is the way to go. It's just going to, the bottom end, all you're building is longevity. You know, you don't build power down here. The only place you build power is flow and compression. Flow, flow, flow. You got to flow to make power. That's the only correlation to power. You, you're not going to go out, buy a piston and buy a rod and think you're making power. Those aren't power adders. The only thing you can buy that adds power is a head. Bigger valves, bigger carb, bigger intake, bigger exhaust. Anything to do with the head. Even the cam doesn't change your power. Change where your power is in the RPM range, but it's not going to increase your power. You know, it might just optimize some of the torque and move it up in the power range, which will might in turn give you more horsepower in the scheme of things. But that whole spread of horsepower to horsepower to torque ratio is going to be the same. It's just moved, which changes things. You're going to T steal from Peter to give to Paul. And I'm Paul. Hi. So, yeah. So, doing that is awesome. Exhaust, optimize the exhaust. Um, make sure you have a nice transition from your head to your exhaust. I might even, in one of these heads that I'm doing down there, that I've showed you in the other videos, I've done an intake uh, tube, as you can see here on the counter with the peppers. Welcome to my kitchen. We're going to be cutting up some peppers today. Pop, 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 pop. So as you can see here, I've done the exhaust, uh, the intake. I'm thinking about doing the exhaust on the other side. Here's a head here. I'm about to shape this down today. Um, he wants me to clean this up before he mills it. Just be a little bit easier for him. This is a flat bar. I just found out where the lowest area was and marked it. You guys have all seen this head before. This is my horror show. Eee, 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 blood and all. This head's going to flow 200 CFM plus. So... You guys have all seen that. If you haven't seen that, watch that video. Amazing. So this is just part of this whole optimizing everything. Um, so that we've optimized. So you have to optimize your air-fuel ratio. I still haven't done the carb tuning video. I have all my stuff right here to do it. Um, I have the methanol for the TM carb jets. I have carb jets here that I was going to use on a TM carb for fuel. So I could talk about that. A lot of people have trouble tuning the two TMs. I have some tips and tricks on that. And then back when I was doing my 420cc engine, I have everything that I was doing, everything that was working and not working for main jet sizes, etc. I've written down. So that's going to come. I have a paper here that just basically goes through everything. I'll put in how to read spark plugs, all of that stuff. So look out for that video. That's going to be a good video, especially if you're trying to go to methanol. There's like really like it's like black art how to jet these things. But yeah, over right here. So exhaust. You want it. So the exhaust increases the pressure drop inside of the engine, which we talked about. Um, so CFM, so the relation to CFM and horsepower I've talked about. So here, here it is. One horsepower is equal to 0.257 CFM. So to put that easily, 100 CFM 
is like 25.7 horsepower. Stock head flows like, I think it flows 73 CFM. Some people have said they've optimized it up to 90. Put that in perspective. I don't care. If you're running a stock head with a stock intake, you're making fucking 25 fucking horsepower max. I don't care what you've done in the end. You put five grand into the fucking thing. If you're flowing 20, if you're flowing 100 CFM or less, you're only making 25 horsepower. If you're flowing 70 CFM, you're making like 18, 19 horsepower. Max. Max. I don't care what your holy grail compression ratio is. I don't care how big you can or how big your lift is. If you are not flowing that air, you're not making it. Period. You're not, you're not going to see the kid on, on the, on the you know, Predator 212 sitting there. You look down at his carb and he's got a little stock carb or a 22 millimeter Makuni talking about, oh, I'm making 27 horsepower. Yeah. We all know that ain't happening. So, unless you get the biggest restriction in there. So, the biggest restriction in this head is 34 millimeter. And this head flows 172 CFM. So it's, and that's gas. Now, now this CFM to horsepower thing, that's gas. You, you want to make the power conversion for methanol. I think it's five. I, no, I think it's 10%. You add 10%. So if it's, uh, 25 horsepower to every hundred CFM, um, you add 10% to 25. That's another three horsepower. You know, if you, if you could flow 200 CFM through your head, that's a potential to make 50 horsepower on gas or, you know, 55 horsepower on methanol. Um, then you've added the nitro and you just go. You don't even worry about how much you're flowing. You just bring it in your own air. So the velocity stack, the flow through the carb, wind resistance, and the weight, and the way it affects flow around the carb opening at the beginning of the interior. We talked about that. Um, I'm going to talk about in another video how to calculate your... Um, intake velocity, your volumetric efficiency, your piston speed, you know that. You have to know that, I think, for both of those. And compression is not the holy grail. So, that's your five cycle engine. Five cycles, not four. So, next time somebody says, oh, how many cycles? Was that a four stroke? Tell them, no, nah, it's five. All right, guys. Like and subscribe as always. I put it all out there on the line for you guys. Please shrink the box down right now. Make it smaller. Click the like button. Um, I know I say that like everybody else does. Like, oh, just smash that thumbs up, that thumbs up button. But please, guys, my videos don't get seen. I put so much raw information out there. I feel like, you know, we can really up the game out there. So uh, if you guys do, in fact, like the videos, please, in fact, like the video. Um, and hit the little notification button. That little button will... Uh, pop up you know I, I i hit that i like causing cameras uh those guys are cool um but yeah so yeah um hit that little notification button i put a video up like every fucking day um just on something uh because all i do is research i'm retired i love doing this shit i'm like 37 i was doing real estate um so i have the money i have the time i'm just playing right now so i'm, I'm just trying to do it the best i can just for fun, just to build one of the best engines I could build, and we're gonna see what happens. So I'm just putting it all out there for you guys. You know, um, I just love doing it. So it's a passion. All right, guys. Bye.